This video demonstrates how to record statutory holidays and public holidays worked over the Easter period 2019. This includes Good Friday, Easter Monday and Anzac Day. First I'm going to the Ranape area. And up here on the right I can see the date range, 15th to the 28th of April. Your pay period may be a different date range. Next I'm going to click on the global leave area here. This is called the leave view. It allows me to set up the leave for all of the staff at the same time. This screen looks a bit blank until I go across to the leave summary menu and select Good Friday from the list. Now I can see that my screen is populated with a few items. And George Grimes here has got a statutory holiday already set up. He didn't work on that day, but he normally works seven and a half hours a day, so it's already picked the right information for me. Fred Johnson, it shows that he worked on a public holiday. He's worked seven hours, and I can check that when I click on his timesheet icon here. And here I can see that he definitely worked seven hours on that Good Friday. So I'm going to close that window. So now it's going to pay him his ordinary standard hourly rate and multiply that by time and a half and it's going to set aside another seven and a half hours as an alternate public holiday for him. To check that figure, I'm going to click this little arrow here, and it tells me that the seven and a half hours are his standard daily hours, which is what I want. Next, Mike Johnson also worked on a public holiday. He worked nine, it says on his timesheet. I'll click the icon to have a look. He definitely worked nine and it's going to pay him his ordinary hourly rate and multiply that by time and a half, which is fine. It's going to put aside nine hours for his alternate public holiday. I'm just going to check those hours, and I can see that he normally works 10 hours, so I'm going to select 10 hours to be put aside for his alternate public holiday off. Next we have Sally. She also usually works on Fridays. She works eight hours, and the system's already picked up a statutory holiday for her. If I wanted to override this, I can click the down arrow here and choose that she worked on the public holiday and still apply the correct settings for her, but she didn't actually work. And the same with Jenny. Jenny didn't work. It doesn't show her hours here, but if I click this arrow, it's going to show me that she normally works seven and a half hours, and I know that's correct. It does tell me that the work pattern doesn't have any settings set up for it, and I can go and address that later. That's why it's not showing the hours here. I'm going to select her ordinary hours, and that's fine. Now I want to apply all of this leave at once. So over here on the right, I'm going to click this checkbox at the top, which selects all the staff together, and then select Apply. Done. Now I'm going back up to the menu to select the next holiday, and we have Easter Monday. Working through the same list, I'm just going to check that the Fred Johnson hours worked on the public holiday are correct, and they are. There's seven hours again, closing that. And Mike worked eight and a half, close that, that's fine. With Fred, I'm going to make sure that his alternate public holiday hours are going to be the correct number of hours, which is seven and a half. And the same for Mike, I know that even though he only worked eight and a half hours on the Monday, he normally works more. So I'm going to select his standard daily hours so that when he takes an alternate holiday, he's got the right amount of time available. Now the same applies to Sally, she didn't work, and Jenny, I'll just tidy up her hours here. And select her correct hours. Back over to the right, select all of the leave at once, and click apply. Done. Same again for Anzac Day. I want to roll, I know what I'm doing, I just change this to be the right number of hours. Mike, again, standard daily hours for him, and the others are fine. Select all and apply. All sorted. There's one more thing to look at. I know that at least two of the staff have requested some days off for holidays that week. To see this, I'm going to book back to the menu and selecting leave requests. And there I can see that George and Sally both have some leave approved. If I move my mouse over this icon here, 
it will open up and show me the days that have been requested and approved. And I can see that George has asked for the Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday of that week, which makes sense since Monday and Thursday are holidays. The annual leave has been loaded and the days are already picked on the calendar. If I click this icon here, I can see them already selected. I can also make changes if I want to by clicking on the days on the calendar. The correct time is loaded, the right rate is loaded, and that's all good to go. Sally is the same, same time off, and I can see that the right dates have been selected on the calendar. Over on the right hand side, I'm selecting them both together, and I'm going to click Apply. That's all done. Now, if I go back to this menu and go back to Leave Summary at the very top, I can get an overview of all the leave that's been loaded for this week. If I wanted to take any of that leave out, I just need to select the cross on the right to delete it. Or I can select all if I want to start all over again. But now if I want to go back and have a look, all I need to do is click on the icon up here, the third one in the little icon panel. This will take me back to the full pay card view. And here I can see that all the leave has been loaded. There's George's, and it's showing me with this arrow here that 45 hours has been reduced from his ordinary salary, which is correct. With Fred, it's showing me a little bit different information. It's showing me that he's had seven hours recorded for one day, two days, three days, and time and a half has been paid. Also that he's had some alternate public holidays banked, so he can take another day off for each of those days another time. The same with Mike. And of course I can click on the preview button on any of these pay cards to have a look at the details. As I move down the screen, I notice that Jenny didn't have a leave request, but I do know that she's taken some leave. Over on the right hand corner of her card, I'm going to manually enter the leave. So I click on the little leave icon here. I can see her stat holidays that I've already recorded through the global leave area, which I can amend here as well, by the way. And I'm going to add her annual leave here. So I'll select annual from the list. And I'm going to pick the day that she took off, which was the 26th. That's all I have to do. I can see over here that she's got plenty of annual leave available. And I click Save and OK. And I can see with the little arrow here that those leave hours have been reduced from her standard hours. So she's not going to be paid twice for the same time. So I'm going to calculate each of those cards now. And now all the pay cards are calculated. I just need to go to the finalise screen and finish the pay off completely. But one other thing I could do before I forget is to enter Jenny's work pattern hours. If I go to employees and select Jenny's name from the list, I can go to her payments screen and then select the edit pencil to the right of her pay rate. At the bottom of her screen is the work pattern area. Now I know she works seven and a half hours a day, so I'm just going to type that into each of those days there. And that's her normal work week. And click OK at the end. Now that Jenny's work pattern hours are stored, the next time that leave is entered for her, the system will already know how many hours to enter for each day.